So hello, welcome to um, our CUSP roundtable. So we're going to be talking about uh, your experiences being back to Rwanda, being back home, working in Rwanda after graduating this year in May. Um, I'm going to start by introducing myself. My name is Dixon Tera. I work as a career service, a career uh, advisor uh, here at the Bridge Career Services. Um, that means I work with students who are juniors uh, to get internships in Rwanda. Uh, I also work with uh, seniors who just graduated uh, to get jobs in Rwanda. Um, I we also work with uh, people who are job seekers, people who are wanting to switch careers or people who, yeah, who are interested in uh, job opportunities in Rwanda. Um, so I'm gonna let you fellows introduce yourself. Maybe we'll start with you, Eric. Can you tell us um, you know, your name and also what you're doing currently? Yeah, my name is Eric Morikier and, and I'm working currently as a fellow in RECA in the diary enterprise and also in mechanization department and irrigation. Adil, you wanna... oh. Hi everyone, my name is Adil and currently I'm working at Tenured Prey. Uh, it's a social enterprise that does aquaponics. So the growing of plants and uh, vegetables and fruits and rearing of fish. And I work as a farm manager. So, I think I'm next, right? Um, my name is Julian Irihose. I'm uh, currently uh, having a fellowship in Acacia Accounting. So it's uh, an accounting firm. They work with different organization, NGOs, private companies, uh, yeah, internationally or, na or local. So, yeah. Well, thank you so much for introducing yourselves. Um, as I said, uh, we have potentially one more fellow joining us uh, from Rika. Uh, her name is Nadine. Um, but thank you guys for introducing yourselves. Um, we've, we've been working together since, I believe, 2019. I think the first time I met you was when you were looking for internships. Uh, can, you, can you maybe tell everybody where you interned um, before you graduated? Yeah, I'll go on and go on and start. Yeah, I interned last year at uh, Rwanda Standard Board, and it was a pretty good internship uh, for my food science concentration. I really enjoyed it, and Dixon helped me a lot to get to get into there. And yeah, I mean, I was in good hands thanks to Bridge Career. Um. I work with Volta Irrigation and yeah, I did study mechanization systems management and irrigation. So I was doing irrigation there. Uh, last summer, is it last summer? Yeah. Uh, I interned with Acacia, the same company that I'm working at right now. Yeah, Akesha is a big fan of Julian, clearly. Mm. <laughs> um, so we have a few questions here. Um, the, first, the first question is, how has the transition been after graduating and moving back home? How has it been since you've been back? Was it a steep transition? How do you feel? Uh, let me go on and start again. Well, it wasn't easy because of the Corona things. And so it was so bumpy, you know. And when we got in Rwanda, there were like uh, things like a business where some were operating it, others were not. So uh, it was tough to get into career right away. But actually like uh, the Dixon also uh, helped me to uh, get some attention from uh, from people like, from other industries and help me like applying. It was pretty new to me and like the system, they do interviews and exams, 
it's uh i mean i wasn't expecting uh, expecting it expecting it but yeah it worked out pretty well as my experience well my experience has been great so i really missed home so coming back was like my dream so i enjoyed being in rwanda and i took the three months to rest and after that, the first company I applied to, I was invited for the interview. And after like a day or two, I was called that I got the job. So I think it was pretty much great. And for now, the company is good. They have welcomed me very well. So yeah, my transition was pretty easy and smooth. Yeah, like the other ones, um... The transition was smooth because the fellowship um, it made it easier in so many ways because uh, due to Corona and everything else that was going on, companies was having hard times. Uh, I mean, receiving interns or any other person. So the fact that there was a fellowship made it a lot easier for us to be able to get those positions. So, so uh, I'll thank again the CASP scholarship for that opportunity. I think it helped us in uh, so many ways. Um, and as a follow-up to that, I'm actually curious, like you guys graduated um, in the midst of, you know, the, the pandemic. Um, and you returned promptly as soon as you could. I'm just curious, did you, were you worried about working as like, as soon as you landed with the whole pandemic happening? Did you feel like you needed some time to just sort of gauge what was happening? You mentioned that, that it was also, uh, you were worried that, you know, the job opportunities would have decreased because of the, the pandemic. But I'm curious if you guys felt like you needed to maybe take some time to yourself or if you were ready to jump in or if you were worried about you know, contracting the disease as well? Anyone who can answer? So for me, uh, I wasn't worried that much because I was confident in myself uh, from what I had learned uh, from UNL. I was sure that I can get a job in irrigation and I can ace that. And yeah, I needed some time. I was going to say that I wanted to jump in to work right away. I needed some time to like to reconnect with family, friends, and also like recharge because we've been studying a lot. So I needed like some like two months or three months to myself to recharge before I can start the work. Same. Uh... I mean, I needed some time off because coming right away from school, going to another um, or another responsibility, I was not ready for that. So I needed some time off even to think what I wanted to, to I mean, to go into which career was going, where was I going to take, which, doesn't mean necessarily that I, I do know it. I do know it right now, but I needed some, that some time off. Mm. Yeah, I believe that uh, I wanted to jump in and work. I say uh, I'm not like the person who can, uh, you know, take some month or two or three months off. Yeah, I wanted to work, but with the pandemic, it, it wasn't clear. It wasn't everything was you know, moving, going around. So yeah, I was waiting for any opportunity to work uh, in within my interest area. Um, let's welcome Nidhi, uh, who is, uh, she's just joining us. She had an urgent meeting, but Nadine, would you mind introducing yourself? Maybe you can state your name, what you studied when you graduated and what you're currently doing. Hi, uh, my name is Nadine Noayezu. I graduated in May 2020 and yeah, I started at uh, the UNL 
uh, University of Nebraska Lincoln, um, in agrarian science and a minor in food science. Uh, yeah. And now I currently work at RICA, uh, yeah, in student affairs. Thank you so much for joining us, Nadine. Mm -hmm. um, Nadine, uh, what's the best part about being home? What, what has been your highlight? You only, honestly, it feels like um, time is slowing down, which is kind of nice because when everything is rushing, you feel like you're being left behind. So it's kind of relaxing. It's a, it's, it's a good pace of life. So that's the most um, good thing about being home. And of course, family. Yeah. Are you saying that um, like it was just super uh, fast pace? In college and uh, things are slowing down in comparison or you're talking about maybe what's happening with the global pandemic and things happening to uh kind of just the pace has changed or um, are you talking about both i mean right now both in the us and rwanda the pace has changed but originally in america it just even if it's slowed down it's just like still everything is always moving so fast you know like um i don't know if it's because you're trying to get through school or trying to get something done, something like that. But then there is just a feeling about being home that's just like everything is cool, no rush, no pressure, you know? So that's what I'm talking about. Not necessarily the pandemic, no. Do you all have the same sort of experience about being home? What's, what's been your favorite part about being home? Uh, I would say mine is being with my family. I miss them a lot. And yeah, we have a pretty big family and we have, we meet like every week. So we have a lot of functions and yeah, I miss that. I miss that. And being able to join again was, and still is the best part about being here. I mean, um, I love being home cause it's home <laughs> first of all. <laughs> The fact that it's home makes me, uh, it's comfortable, I don't know. Um, it's different than, it's different from being far away. That's the big, the, the big, the first big part about it is the fact that I'm home, close to my family, close to everybody that I'm used to, um, yeah. Second, though, uh, sec second of all is that uh, I needed to come and see for myself, like what is, uh, how is the professional world in this in my country, in Rwanda, uh, like see it for myself, not hearing from everybody else, like have my own experience. Yeah, I think it was pretty cool for me also to come back home it was so nice and you know you get to meet uh, your your friends and your families and you get to eat a brochette <laughs> i missed it <laughs> and yeah, it was it was also like a cool environment to go at rica it's kind of a mixed a mixed environment a kind of a rwandan and some sort of american so i fit so perfect but yeah i missed i miss home i miss the weather i miss everything yeah, it's pretty nice here I have uh, sort of like two follow-up questions. I think all of you are not, or I, I don't know, do you, because you're all kind of far away from your actual homes. I think some of you are in the bubble, Arika, so you don't actually go home as much as you, uh, I don't know how much you're able to go to visit. Um, Julian, I think you might also be in the in a different district from where your uh, your family is. I don't know about Odil. Odil might be the only one who actually, uh, Lives that goes home every night. Is that true, yeah. or how has that been? How's the experience been? Do you feel like it's a little bit similar to how it was when you're in the U.S.? Um, do you still miss people? Do you still have to FaceTime? What's um, the experience? So I'm working in, in Kigali, but I live in Bugesera, so that's where my family is. So I live in Kigali, but I go home every weekend. I don't miss that much, even though like I go and for the five days I'm gone, 
I come back and my nephews don't recognize me, but that's okay compared to being, to it being AR before they can see me. So yeah, it's pretty good compared to what we had before. Mm, I uh, work. Yeah, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> no. So yeah, um, I'm, I, my home is in the western part of Rwanda, so it's I'm far away from my home. But I also have relatives where I'm here in Kigali, so it's ho it's I mean it's helpful than in the US. <laughs> so, but I don't I don't really go back home often but th there's that that environment that you you were born in that you were used to that is different from being so far away um so Julian, you said you said something really interesting you said uh, you sort of you had to see for yourself that I think that's how you said it. You had to see for yourself. I'm curious, like now that all of you are home and you're working, um, what is this what you expected? Is this sort of the experience you thought it would be or what has been um, something that was a bit surprising, like your experience being like part of the job uh, force in Rwanda? What, what, what has been different or expectations that were met or not met essentially? So, as I mean, at this point, what I was able to see is um, the the platforms that the platforms that announce what kind of opportunity are around are not that many. So you need to, I mean, despite that we have bridge surrender to help us. Otherwise, I think that will be cha challenging to so many other people. Um, uh, also, but from my past uh, internship that I had here, it helped me a little bit to, to know the work environment better than if I didn't have the the internship, so it helped in some ways. Um, but searching for a job, it can be really hard, but we, but the help of Bridge to Rwanda, it help us somehow. I don't know if anybody else have other views. <laughs> Anyone else? <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah, I was going to say that um, it was like, it wasn't as I expected it to be like um, so I didn't have the experience of like being in the office because like all the internships I had I was always on the farms like most of the time we didn't even have an office uh, but now uh, because I'm working for a startup we don't have a farm yet so I'm always in the office so it was a bit challenging at first, but I would say that I was equipped for that through the leadership classes we had. So yeah, I think uh, I adapted to that pretty well, but it wasn't as what I expected it to be. Um, personally, it wasn't definitely what I expected. I, I expected to uh, to go to work, come home, see my people. Or if not, at least them, see them every other weekend, but I do not. It feels like I'm also far away and it's not the best experience, honestly. And um, it gets harder because you, don't, you don't, really don't have any personal life. You're at work 24 seven. And it's just, um, it's challenging, but we learning on the professional aspect. Um, I did a lot of office work. 
Um, I've kind of had an experience when I was working at uh, Get It. Um, I was working at Lot in the office as well, like, uh, but then I could have also some practical hours. So definitely wasn't very, very new. Um, but there are, of course, uh, areas of, you know, learning, communication, um, how to interact with people at work, uh, those kind of things that I've been learning and it's been um, good so far, yeah. But it's not what I expected. <laughs> yeah, I think on my personal view, when I did the internship, I did it at RSB, but uh, the work at RSB is pretty different than the work at Rika. So there's like a different attitude, uh, like the way the people, the, uh, the co-workers, they, their attitude towards the work is so different, it's so different. And I think at Rika, you have to work, you have to, you have to give your whole, which is pretty good. Uh, but yeah, I mean, when you have, when at Rika, you have to be flexible because like uh, something will be not going well in one department, then you have to go and help because, you know, they're just in, in the construction. So you have to be flexible with that. And it was so different with RSB, uh, but yeah, the work uh, in overall generally in, in Rwanda, uh, yeah, it's pretty different than what I expected. I expected it to be uh, much more, uh, professional, which is not quite to that level I've seen in uh, other countries. Yeah, that'll be my comment. Um, Nadine, do you want to explain uh, why you can't see people? I think people will be confused. They'll be uh, just go see them. Uh, explain why, uh, especially in the Rika context, why you're far away. Um. So Rika is a university and uh, it's, a, it's a boarding university. So students live on campus um, and they had to create bubble, a bubble so that students stay on campus and all employees or professors who has to interact with the students also stay on campus. And because of shortage of workers and all, there can never be a rotation where you work from outside of campus and somebody walks in campus, you have to stay there all uh, for all the time that the semester is ongoing. Um, so that's why I can't see my family. Yeah. Uh, that, that must be really challenging, uh, being, you know, like living where you work. Um, so it's, it almost feels like you're probably always working. Um, yeah, that, that, that is challenging. What are what are some things you've been doing to cope? Um, we tried playing games, cards, uh, any kind of board games, uh, working out. Um, but you get sick of that. You can do that for <laughs> thirty days, and another thirty days. Now you just want to see new people or people you you do, <laughs> and run around, walk outside. Yeah, mm -hmm. but yeah. I tried you know games and you know. I mean, yeah, it almost feels like the uh, the lockdown didn't mm -hmm. stop for you. Yeah, yeah I did not. <laughs> but uh, I hear the school is closing soon, so you're gonna take a break and go. Uh, yeah. Be home. I can't wait. I'm counting days. <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, Eric, what you said about um, the professionalism, mm -hmm. you said that this you, you expected more. And do you have a, you, your expectations were not met? You feel like people weren't um, super. Uh, was that, yeah, because I'm thinking like, would you say that it's probably the case um, everywhere? I feel like every company, if you work for government or nonprofit or every country as well, like you're always going, like that's, that's the thing about, you know, living, even, that's the thing about working. I feel like with people, like you learn that is everybody. Everybody has a very different personality, you know. It, and it, that's something you learn from the job force. It's like you you have to find a way to collaborate with everyone. You know, at the end of the day, right? There's like a job that needs to be done. Um, there is tasks that needs to be you know completed, and then the whole office is full of 
different personalities, people who like to work collaboratively, people who don't like to work collaboratively, uh, people who, uh, yeah, just different personalities. You sort of have to navigate that space and figure out how to get your, uh, your work done. Um, and I feel like, wouldn't you say that's probably the case in every country? And I would even say even in college, right? Like, you yeah. remember when you had those, uh, like, lab things yeah. and you had to work with different people or if you had to present on something? And, you know, there would be always that one kid who just will not do the work and you have to constantly email them and you end up having to do something. Um, but I'm curious if that there's similarities to that. Like, and also like a, a very important sort of learning moment for you as well, working with people maybe whose professionalism isn't where it used to be. Yeah, man, actually uh, what I'm learning is, I would say it's more about leadership because you can see people doing some job, but they're not doing it efficiently and they have tools to do it efficiently. So, I mean, they, it's just that culture, you know, it's, uh, it resists to change. And yeah, what I do uh, most of the time, I try to, to do it by myself and show it to him or her so that he or she can see that it actually works much more efficiently. I think that's my, my learning, my learning opportunity right now. Yeah, but I, yeah, I'm, I'm learning a lot of things with working with those kind of different, different people. I'm adapting. Yeah, and I'm curious, like, it's probably a very delicate thing, you know, for example, you're saying you're identifying a gap, right? Maybe it's some of these uh, individuals you, you're working with are, are lacking some skills in leadership or in other areas, and you possess some of those skills, so you're seeing the gap and you're trying to uh, find a way to, like, uh, help everyone notice that there's a gap that needs to be built, and I feel like that's that's a delicate thing to do because like if you don't want to come off as like this is something you probably think about like you don't want to come off as like a know-it-all or like that yeah. you're condescending or patronizing so it's like you have to walk really carefully to make sure yeah. that you you can teach them the way or you know provide those skills to them which is really at the end of the day you, you know they, they teach you things you teach them things you know but you're yeah. also very young you know yeah. <laughs> so how do you what's your what's your technique what's been your experience do you feel like it's gone well so far or because I think a lot of people in your position they'd be like oh wow well, you know I'm just gonna leave this alone yeah um, yeah what what I usually do is uh I just like state it out like say yeah you can actually use that excel sheet to help you with the calculation I can say like uh one or two three times and if he on she's not responding and I'm working with him or her, then I have to, I use it myself, by myself, then they can learn from that. They, they, I mean, so far it's have been, like, it been successful, but I was, I was quite afraid of uh, making the first step, but so far it's working, I would say. Um, yeah, personally, um, yeah. Personally, uh, when I was encountered with such challenge, um, on one end, I was very lucky to have um, a coworker who was willing and very eager to be like, hey, Nadine, this is what I know. Show me why you know this, do this. That was amazing. And then on this other side, there's somebody, you don't tell them anything they do not wanna do. It's very annoying and very challenging and you have to keep on a professional look and not look annoyed or mad, but then just, <laughs> you know, I'm hoping with time, maybe um, they'll warm up and, you know, like to ideas, to new ideas and suggestions. Um, um, and if they don't, that's the perk of, you know, <laughs> being, you know, an adult in our work environment, but it's definitely challenging. You have to uh, go easy, like just make it a suggestion and not try to point out that the person does not know what they're doing or they're doing it wrong. Just like a suggestion, this can work. Do you want to see how it works? That kind of thing. You have to uh, to figure out a way to say it in a way that does not offend them, which is where the leadership and communication skills come in. And they're playing uh, really, um, they're getting in handy, yeah. They're very useful, yeah. 
but the, the the challenging part is when somebody does not want to learn that's uh, that's tough any tips <laughs> The deal has been smooth for you, smooth writing for you. So, um, your team is really small. Yeah, it's very small, and we are a startup. And like um, the CEO and like the co founder, it's not like they are very experienced in the agriculture industry. So, um, I'd like on the team, I'm the only person who did agriculture. So, I'm um, somehow like the leader. So like, it's not like they tell me what to do. They, they do not tell me anything. Like I, so we have daily meetings and weekly meetings. So I just go there and tell them I'm working on this. So I will present this to you and this and this. So it's been great for me. So there is nothing like bumping heads with them as long as I'm working on something that benefits the company. I'm glad to hear. And I'm curious, has it, has it been in, have you had uh, experiences where it's been the opposite? It's been you who didn't have a certain skill or you, you know, you were, you needed to also learn something. And how was that experience for you? Did you feel, did you, you know, did you feel, did you feel ashamed or were you, was it like hard for you to also admit to yourself like, oh, you know, what? in this situation, I'm the one that's sort of, you know, dragging my feet, or I also need some training here and there. So, like I said, I'm working with a company that does uh, aquaponics. So it's rearing fish and farming fruits and vegetables. So I have never done that. Uh, I just had a small system at home, so I had never done something as big as what we are doing here. So. I'm always learning and they're open to that. Uh, they asked me if I need anything, if I, I want to do any training, they can cater for that. Like if I have any questions, they connect me to like different people whom, with whom they know, like they can give me what I need and they info from that. So speaking on that, I've been working on some, you know, on a project to get electricity to the farm because we're gonna need electricity 24 seven. So they have introduced me to some guy who works for Power Africa. So I've been learning a lot about electricity. So I didn't feel ashamed or like, they're not gonna think I know what I'm doing. Like they're going to think, why did they hire me if they need to train me to do the work? So yeah they are very welcoming and encouraging. So I'm learning a lot of new things or adding to what I knew prior to coming here. Yeah, I think, I think it's, it's really humbling um, uh, when you start working because you know, you, you, you're in school and you have a certain sort of major, a certain field. Um, most of it is theory, you know, but then you get to the job course and you realize that there's, there's a lot, there's a lot to learn. Um, most, you know, job opportunities require a lot of flexibility, a lot of like new skills that you might not possess. Um, and it's, and it also it's just compassion, you know, like next time you see these, you know, individuals who are lacking in certain skills, you know, you know, like, oh, you know what, I've been there, you know, <laughs> so um, you offer some help when you can. Um, what about the rest of you? Have you learned any new skills you feel like you have to learn? I, I believe that I was working with cows here at the dairy cow. So it was my first time to work with dairy cows. So the first day I was like, okay, you're gonna teach me. You're gonna teach me how to do everything, milking, cleaning, whatever, bring the grasses. And I had to do the, the, the hardest part was like, a. I mean, during the, the labor of the cow, like uh, to help with the pulling the calf out. It was pretty new and shocking, I would say, for some people. It was, wow. yeah, wow. It, was, yeah it, was a, it was a learning thing for sure. So yeah, you have to, yeah, you have to lay down and learn. Yeah, that's it. 
Sure, you have to that's, kind of that's, that's the best way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, uh, I think at Danny, like I, I think we had like three cows delivering in the first three weeks. So yeah, and we had like two cows that delivered like two consecutive days. I think I'm an expert now. <laughs> I think <laughs> so. <kidding. laughs> yeah, yeah, that was my out of my <laughs> Yeah, and now out of, out of the bubble, now I'm learning how to operate some machineries. Uh, I'm learning how to drive the motorcycle because you need a motorcycle to run around the campus. Mm -hmm. So yeah, you just go in and learn. That, that's what I'll say. So what piece of advice would you give to your fellow car scholars who are probably before graduating this next year in 2021 uh, about just being home or um, you know, as you know, right now it's, you know, it's end of the fall semester for them. So they're starting their winter break. A lot of them are working on applications for grad school, a lot of them are, you know, thinking about OPT or jobs in Rwanda. There's a lot of anxiety about the future. What's the right choice? Um, I'm just curious what kind of advice you give them, considering the time and also, you know, some of your own anxieties or fears that you felt like you had that you know you, you you turned out to be you just turned out differently yeah the, the very first thing the very first advice i would give to everyone is flexibility you know like their work outside of the can like the colleges it is not what you learn it's not about the assignment that i did or the paper that you wrote uh it's pretty different you go in and spray, everything is pretty new. There, yeah, there's no assignment or what. Or papers, are there some papers to write, the reports. But literally, you have to be flexible outside. And as their students, it's better for you if you can get like some, uh, well, I mean, like maybe working in a lab experience, you can, you have to go for it because that way it helps you to be much more flexible when you're outside. And the other thing uh, for the students who are like uh, getting ready to uh, for the graduation, the very first thing is to decide what you want to do. And wh when you have like that target, then you know what to do. And you have to know to to uh, to know the balance between like social life and work life, such thing as that. So you have to take into uh, account everything like that. That's the every, that, that's my advice. Um, personally, go on a deal. <laughs> um, my advice, uh, added like, I'd stress more on flexibility, like adding to what Eric has said, um, like I encourage them to look for something like not like different from what they've been doing, but not to focus on like if they are doing food science to think that they're gonna get like they are only working on food science jobs. Like I uh, I encourage them to apply to like as many jobs as possible, but also to consider their passion, not like since they are hiring in accounting, I can just apply. Like look for something you enjoy. And if that's something you enjoy, even if you don't know like everything that needs to be done there, I think you can survive there more than you can at a job you like at something you are qualified for, but you're not passionate about it. Uh, from my experience, like right now I'm working on fish and everything. And I didn't study that, but I love that. And sometimes it's the job is very challenging, but because I love it, I can even spend 10 or 11 hours in the office, even if I'm not required to be there. But when there is a job that needs to be done. I stay and do that because I'm passionate about that. I want to see the project running and to see the success of the company. But if you are working on something just because of the money, then I don't think that's great. I, I want them to do what they are passionate about. 
Um, what I was going to say was very similar to what Odile said. And yeah, um, remember your why. Like, just like Eric said, know what you want to do. And then remember your why. Uh, if you have a reason and you are happy with the reason, go ahead with it. Because uh, like, um, if you decide something without really knowing why, you're going to get to in that position. Like, let's say you decide to come back to Rwanda right after graduation. And then you come back and it goes two months or three months without getting a job and you start regretting, why did I come here? But if you know why you came back, you'll be able to wait on whatever you're looking for, either a job or starting your own business or starting your own project. If you know your why, it's going to give you strength to to push through whatever waiting seasons or whatever challenges you're going to face when you're trying to pursue what you want to do. So, yeah. Know your why. Julian, any advice? Uh, so, yeah, I like what Nadine said. Mm, I was trying to figure out what to say, but I think Nadine said it in a good way. No, the reason why, I mean, why you want to do what you want to do, because um, that's the only hope that will push you, uh, even though things are not going well, or uh, even, even though people may say uh, this and that, but when you know why you're doing what you're doing, it pushes you. Um, yeah. Thank you. Um, I'm gonna find a question. Um, looking at the agriculture sector right now, um, how do you see changing? Um, maybe compared to when you started, you know, when you were in high school, I know all of you were already interested in ag while you were young. A lot of you um, already um, were exposed, directly exposed. Um, and then, of course, there's like your time in Nebraska, like, like just soaking in all that information about the different sectors of ag, because you also need to be sciences. And then your experience coming home and doing that internship um, and now actually working within your field. Um, uh, or, or at least, you know, in the lateral, laterally, you know, like seeing what's happening, working for institutes that are, are work directly with um, ag businesses. I'm just curious, like what, like inspires you? What, 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 where you think it's all headed? Anyone make an answer? So after I graduated, I've seen like, even when I was in school, I've seen a lot of change. Uh, so my family farms, so they own a farm. And before I went to study agriculture, they weren't doing much on the farm or even getting more from the farm. But now that I know something on the, about farming, uh, I, they have started incorporating synthetic fertilizer into their farming and doing irrigation. And I've seen so much growth on their farm. And yeah, I think it has also improved their livelihood, mine included. And also speaking on, on the farms and um, companies doing agriculture, I'd say here in Rwanda, agriculture is growing. Like I've seen very, like very many people don't understand the technology like you can farm using technology. Like people think farming is for the poor, but like for now it's changing. I've seen very many, uh, companies doing something similar to what we are doing. And for people to grow food without soil, I think there is some improvement and which like can be celebrated considering the literacy date here in Rwanda. Like um, most of the farmers, like for this company I'm working with, we are working with local farmers and they are like adapting to the system very well. So I think there is growth and yeah. I can also add to that. Uh, yeah, like the agriculture sector have been, have been seeing some trends, positive trends. 
And uh, the, uh, in, back in 2016, you could barely see like machineries on the farm. But right now, uh, as I go to and from the work, I can um, I see a lot of machineries in the Dabuyasera Road. You can see like a lot of people are investing a lot of money to produce food. That means like they're getting money, much, much more money. So that, that shows like there's like a, a great, great potential for ag technician in, in the future. They, there's a great opportunity, you know, it's clear. It's clear that there's a great opportunity. And you can see now, now farmers like uh, farming uh, a lot of uh, legumes. It was not very familiar, it was not very common. Legumes, fruits, yeah. And when they go into like, uh, there's a, a lot of pl planting chilies for export. So that shows like a, I mean, an area for, to, I mean, to explore. Yeah, like they said, it's clear that the country is putting a lot of effort in the agriculture sector because there's so many, um, uh, so many uh, um, activities that is going on that that is um, encouraging people to invest in agriculture. Banks are giving money to people to to do agriculture. Um, the, it's so clear that there is a lot of effort being being put in the agriculture sector. The opportunity is there, and um, uh, encouragement on the part of the government also, especially for people who want to to go into the agri business and do their business in the agriculture sector. Um. I've also seen some changes. Uh, back in 2016, we went for college. Um, there were bare, I mean, there were a few, there were main, like the main ones, the food producing companies in Yanje and some other companies that, you know, based on uh, crops and other natural um, uh, crops that are built. There are very few, but now uh, I've realized there are more companies that are, rely on agriculture pro products to make their products such as oils, uh, um, natural soaps, um, even processing. So many uh, people are making bread out of corn, out of um, uh, sweet potatoes. So many, so many processing companies have arisen from the growth of the agriculture. So definitely there is uh, so much change in the agriculture sector and the improvement is um, vivid. Thank you. Um, Christian, Amandine, do you have any questions before we end the call? I have one question. Thank you everyone for sharing your experiences. I was wondering now that you've been working um, here back at home, oh, I don't know, You've talked about what you expected and how different it is and whatnot. What are your long-term projects after seeing what the job market is here? So for me, when I came back to Rwanda, I wasn't necessarily looking for a job. Like that wasn't my main goal to come here. I wanted to start my own business so right now because of covid like i didn't get as much as as much capital as i expected but i plan on starting my own business as soon as i get the money like the capital but i am also like this company i'm working for does something that i wanted to do so i'm not gonna quit my job right away but when i get the funds to start my own i i plan to start continue working here for like a year and then later quit and i think after one year i want to go back to school to learn more about fish 
I didn't study fish, so I'm doing that later. Sorry, my answer was very long. <laughs> um, thank you. Uh, personally, uh, I I um I want to I wanted to kind of experience the work life or the profit, you know, like work somewhere before I go back to school so that I, I can uh, truly see like what I like. Cause back in school, I did different internships and each internship told me, mm, you don't really like this as much as you thought you do. So no. And then I could do something a little different, twist it a little. So I found out that by doing something, you realize what you like or what you don't like. And I didn't want to rush uh, to school so that, you know, I go through it, but I just wanted to spend some time, work, and really see what I want to do in the future so that I can go back to school for that if I need to, or if I do not need to, then make connections that will help me uh, pursue my goal. Um, yeah. That's uh, relevant. <laughs> Um, any more questions? Um, Adil, it seems like you're getting uh, training for your future business. It seems like they're paying you to learn. <laughs> I feel like everything you're doing is definitely preparation for your uh, Adil Fish, <laughs> Adil Fish company when the time comes. Um, well, thank you all so much. Um, as I told you, we're going to send this video to um, all of the core three and other and then the other cohorts as well, so that they can um, benefit from this discussion. Um, we talked about work-life balance, learning new skills at the college, company cultures, the architect in Rwanda. So many, so many topics to choose from. But all of these were uh, will be very, very valuable for any student who's. Um, who is graduating from college, uh, who's studying what you're studying. Uh, so thank you so much for all of your um, wise words and um, um, great conversations. Um, do you have anything to say, any sign up? <laughs> nope, okay. Well, have a great, wonderful evening, okay? Bye everyone. Thank you, bye. Mm -hmm.